everyone, welcome back to my channel, Paper Therapy with Amy. I'm happy to have you once again. I have the Sweet Memories collection here, and what better collection is there for a wedding? So I have the bride and groom here, and then I have um, a picture of the bride and groom at the church after the wedding service, and uh, this is all their nephews and nieces. These are my boys here, the oldest, the second oldest, and the third oldest. So um, they are the three first nephews of this young lady that is my husband's baby sister. And this young man uh, acquired all these nephews and nieces on his wedding day. So my husband did the same thing. I'm the baby of my family by 17 years, and this girl is the baby of her family. My husband's the oldest, so that's 17 years between them. And uh, the same thing happened to this guy. So here's a picture of my sister-in-law and I, after um, family photos, we had a drink that she had packed along in a cooler because it was such a hot day. It was uh, close to 40 degrees, 36 or 37 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, it might help you to know that for Celsius, uh, zero is freezing. So, um, and the degrees are a different size. I think the Fahrenheit degrees are a little bit bigger. But I would say it's probably about 100, maybe just under. So it was hot outside. Um, here's the guys. They were like taking off and opening up their dress shirts because they didn't want to sweat through everything before the ceremony because we had pictures done before the ceremony. So uh, here's another one of my husband and one of his brothers walking. We had to do quite a long walk to where we had the pictures taken and it was so hot. This is my mother and father-in-law speaking a little bit at the wedding. And um, this is my son and my husband's younger brother comparing heights. He was always the tallest in the family and um, our middle son beat him. So just some fun memories from the day. Those are the pictures that I have to scrapbook today. And I'm gonna use this paper pocket because really she has kind of like a pink underlay in her dress, like a peachy pink. And so I just think these pictures go really well with this paper. Now, what I wanted to add into this paper, I'm gonna show you that right away, is I have this um, collection here. It's the um, Memory Lane paper packet, and it has some similar colors. The pink is different, but it does have the greens. And this sheet was in there, and it's kind of sage green, but it also has like some pink going through it. I don't know if you can see that. It's almost like, is it there or isn't it? And I just thought it really looked nice with the dress and these pictures, so. Um, I'm going to try and incorporate this sheet of paper in, but I only have one sheet and I want to have some of it on both sides. Okay, I'm thinking that I'm going to cut this sheet kind of like this with an L shape because I want to have, um, I want to use the ledger sheet. That's this one here. And I kind of want to have like a, a bottom frame going around it, like it's coming down from the top. So, and then I'm thinking that I'm going to have the pictures positioned kind of like this and then this one kind of overlapping because it's a church building here so we can just kind of overlap that onto there and um for the other side i do want to have some of this continue so i was thinking i may just kind of continue it along here and um, maybe put a piece of the the hero kind of paper in here which is this one um this one here um, one thing I want to do is I really think it would be nice if this design went over this picture and I have done that before um, It's not that difficult to do. I just need you need a cutting mat and you need a knife So I'm just gonna um, Grab those two things and show you how I do that. I misplaced the cutting mat I like to use for this. So I'm just gonna use this piece of Cardboard. It's actually two pieces. I think but that's okay. It'll protect these mats are self-healing and I could do it on here, but I don't really want to have a deep cut in here. So this is just a little better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut carefully oops, um, along the edge of the flower because that's what I want to pop over top of the picture. And I'm going to ignore this too and I'm going to go along the camera. So you can purchase these sort of exacto knives at the dollar store or all over the place and you just need to go right along the edge of the flower. You don't want to leave a white border in this situation because it's really hard to keep that border 
perfectly even so I just go right along the edge of the flower and then if I go in onto the flower a little bit you can't really tell. Now I'm just trying to decide where I'm going to cut uh, this piece of paper and I really did want to keep some of that upper right corner where it says number such and such that little bit of decorativeness. I wanted to keep that so that I could uh, repeat some of this ledger paper on the other side of the page and kind of have that over there to bring some of that color over there. I also was really hoping to incorporate some of that zip strip. It has what looks like little doilies on it uh, and it's it really seemed to fit with the theme of my layout. I knew I kind of wanted a frame of this green paper on uh, two sides of the left hand layout and then I knew I wanted to bring some of the green paper onto the right hand side but if I only had the one sheet and I was cutting out that square that's behind the ledger paper I would have to find a way to just add that much into the other side and I was really hoping to have a full 12 inch piece so I went searching in my um, paper and lo and behold I had a six inch piece left of this patterned paper so I was able to do a full strip um, across the other side so it looks kind of like there's a frame on the far left hand side and a frame all the way across the bottom. So now I'm still just trying to plan how I'm going to add the other pieces of paper in this layout and I'm trying to use pieces that I've left over from a kit that I made for someone um, so I just kind of want to use these scraps instead of cutting into the big sheets. So I'm laying out my right hand photos here and kind of deciding how they're going to be arranged and I decide I'm going to go for a grid. I definitely don't like the zip strip across the middle there and there's something just not working for me. So I decided to flip these pieces of paper and try, um, try having the grid style go across the papers when they're more linear. Right away I know I like this better but they need a mat so I'm going to decide what color I want the mat to be. I like the mulberry, but I find that the pictures pop quite a bit more on the mist, so I decide that that is going to be the uh, mat for this grid of photos. I love working with the Versa mats, but the one thing that makes it a little more difficult is the fact that there's a gap between um, the two pages on a two-page layout, so you always have to think about that gap. I knew I wanted that um, mat to be right against the middle line between the layouts. I also knew that I wanted to continue the um, paper, a, a same size paper from the mat on the layout on the left hand side to kind of give some continuity from the two um, layouts because I was arranging my pictures completely different from one to the other. So this is where you'll see the layout really start to take shape. This is where I realized when I was putting that large mat there that I didn't really need all that patterned paper behind the mat because you weren't going to see it anyway. So I brought in a piece of white daisy and I kind of pieced together my background bits um, from the little pieces I had left over rather than using such big background pieces. I could have done it either way, but just because I had that big piece of mist cardstock covering the center, I realized I just really have to add the pattern pieces around and tuck them a little bit underneath and no one will be the wiser that they aren't completely underneath. So now I'm really happy with the design. I'm really happy with the color being brought across the page in the background papers and it's time to start to choose a title and embellish. Mulberry made a really nice mat for this picture of the bride and groom and I wanted to bring some mulberry also to the other side of the layout so I added it in on the open square of my grid which is going to be where the journaling appears. I have a stamp with text on it. Um, we have several of these stamps. This one is no longer available. It's from Dream Maker and I am just going to use Sage to stamp onto, it's actually juniper that I've cut these leaves from because I have lots of juniper hanging around and it matches this paper pack pretty good. And I'm just going to um, stamp on these leaves to give them some texture, some words kind of on them. It's barely noticeable, but it just gives them a little bit of, um, yeah, texture and not that so that they're not so flat looking. You'll see I have some flowers there that I had previously stamped out. I did ink them up with um, a, a blending brush to kind of give them some color, but I don't end up using those. I do spray everything here with um, a shimmer spray that I have. 
Uh, it's barely noticeable. You can kind of see it, especially on the swirls, but I end up painting the swirls with a kind of pearly paint later just to um, tone them down a little bit. I wanted to talk about the title I chose. I chose this title simply because I could have used this one and I love it. It's very pretty. But I also think it's a lot more fitting for boys and um, like grad or something like that. And that's what I have a lot of pictures to do yet. Um, this color and and this these words seem more fitted to a wedding and I don't know when I'm going to do a wedding again. So this seems like a good plan. So I'm going to I'm going to put this, but I kind of wanted something to make it stand out. So let's try adding a little black in here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this down a bit more so that it actually can fit. There we go. I don't know if I'm going to go over or come under here. I think under looks kind of good. There. And then it kind of frames, see how it'll frame the sweet memories and I can separate it from this picture and it still feels connected. So that's kind of what I was planning. Let's see if these match good enough to tuck in. First, I think a blue base would be nice. So let's try this doily. And I don't have another doily cut right now and I'm sure I'm gonna wanna bring some to the other side. So I may trim a little bit off. Let's start here. Um, thinking let's layer this up actually cut this one off so that we can kind of make this curve into here I liked this flower to add into this embellishment cluster but I didn't care for the um, that it was on a circle so I decided to just fussy cut it out and add it to my cluster I did a lot of fussing with the embellishments on this layout. I actually kind of struggled with them. Try, I kind of, um, I got to a point where I realized it was all being a little overdone and I took a lot back off and it's still quite busy when the layout is finished. But unfortunately, I'll explain in the end um, that my video uh, did not work throughout the whole embellishment process. As usual, I will link this stamp set down below. It is a stamp set that has all sentiments for scrapbooking, and it's one of my favorites. If you are um, not new to my channel and have been here before, you'll know that I use it often. It didn't fit exactly the way it is on the stamp, so I had to ink up one side and then the other side, making sure I wiped it clean in between so that I could have the words kind of more staggered than they are on the stamp. This little swirl is a thin kit that's only available in the card workshop kit and it's one of the reasons I bought the card workshop kit because it's such a great little um, embellishment for especially for more formal layouts like this. While I'm working on this process, I just wanted to share with you how much I appreciate everyone who stops by my channel and watches and especially all the comments and um, all the subscribers. Thanks so much. I'm so happy to have you all. And if you would be so kind, I'd love it if you hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out here on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so that you know as soon as I put new videos out. I use a few of these butterflies here and there on the page and I'm just showing you here how I put the pop-up tape on the wings and I glue the center part down with either glue or tape runner. It sometimes lifts the tape runner so glue works the best and that way it kind of has movement. It looks like the butterfly's wings are higher than his body which is what butterflies normally look like. So this is the area I really struggled with in this layout and the video will cut off soon before I kind of um, take that doily completely out and give up on trying to use it. Uh, I really wanted to use it, but somehow I also wanted the leaves up there and it was just all together too much when I tried to put it all there. So it just didn't work out for me. This little strip of butterflies worked awesome though. I love how it looks. So I do end up leaving that on the page. This little swirl is a stamp with a thin cut that is also in the card kit. Like I said, there's a lot of wonderful things in the little card kit, 
for uh, sweet memories. So I highly recommend getting that card kit even for all the items you can use for scrapbooking. And as always, I will link it down below. So that last little phrase that I, or little word that I stuck down, those three words were all on circle and oval stickers. And because circles and ovals didn't really work great with this layout, I just cut them into rectangles. The Sweet Memories scrapbooking stamp set has this little kind of flourish and I decided to use it underneath those words to kind of finish off that little space. I thought about using it in other areas and I do use it in one more area on the right hand page but I do not use it again on the left hand page. Okay everyone, here's a look at the finished product. This was not an easy layout. Oh, it was one of those times when um, you know, people kept making noise in the background. I thought I was going to be home alone and I'm not. And <laughs> you can hear my husband putting dishes away. I mean, I have a good husband. He's putting dishes away, but yeah. Um, so a couple things I changed. Um, first of all, uh, a WhatsApp message came through and shut off my camera. I don't know why that happened. Uh, I didn't have my um, sound turned up, so I didn't hear it. So sadly a lot of the embellishment process is missing, but that's okay because I took a lot of it apart. I had um, that doily here and I decided that it was just getting to be too much and I just wanted a little bit of leaves and flowers and even these black um, swirls, they just felt a little too dark. I wished that I had toned them down a bit. So I went over with a paintbrush and some silvery paint and I just toned them back with a little silvery paint and I'm feeling a lot better about them. And uh, this part here took a while. It's still a little busy, but I'm. it was a lot busier, so I'm feeling better about it now. I also used the silvery paint to flick with the paintbrush across um, all these spots. So there is kind of some ink um, flicking happening here, but I find that it helps to like make it all come together. So I'll just give you a close up. So there's the bottom where I cut with the knife. If you remember, here's my butterfly with its ling wings. It looks like it kind of popped off the middle here. That's why you have to use the glue and not I'll have to tuck some glue under there because the tape runner um, isn't strong enough. It pops it up when you put the pop-up tape underneath those two wings. And you can see the splatters too. There's some here and um, how it kind of toned back the black on those swirls. I just had to do it really carefully because they were glued down. So. There's the title and then there's the swirls there and then over here I just did a little bit of something to fill up the space a little bit and these were oval and circle stickers and I cut them into rectangles just because ovals and, and circles didn't really work for me for this layout. I'll have to do some journaling in here. And uh, don't these two guys, my husband and his brother, just look like they're toddlers, right? Like, here I am with my shirt off. <laughs> oh, it was so hot. We were so hot. Anyways, um, that is the finished product. I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out, but I did have uh, some trouble in the middle. One thing I really love about this layout a lot is this... Um, piece of paper around the edge here. I just love how it has a little bit of the pink in it and it just seems to bring all the pictures together and it really um, it's neat because it's like a frame style layout but you don't need two sheets in the background because you only need the strip here and then you kind of have the frame coming up along here. So I really like that. Anyway I hope you enjoyed watching this layout come together and I'll catch you next time here on YouTube. Bye!